Super Smash Brothers. What can you say about it? For 20 years, it's brought together characters and worlds into one collective experience. Let's be real. Most of you don't even play Smash anymore. No, I can safely say the thing people care about most with Smash Bros are the character reveals. The monumental occasions when a new character is revealed and the anticipation is enamoring all of us. It's amazing, but that hype won't happen anymore because the game, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, it's completed. However, we can always look back and relive all of those hype moments. So today, we're going back. We're going to look at every character reveal from Smash 64 all the way to... Cat, I tried running the numbers, and they started giving me sass. Oh, what a travesty. As a compromise for taking on this hellish task, I'm giving myself a free skip. I don't know who yet, but it's like a gut feeling. I'll know when I see him. So let's begin. You don't have to yell, I'm right here. Hi, the roster that started it all. Okay, yeah, they technically didn't have reveals at this point, but it wouldn't feel right not to cover everybody. I mean, how did these characters get revealed? Box art, promotional material. They did appear at E3, but the game had already been out in Japan for already half a year. So players, they got to see the intro as well as whatever promotional materials there were for it. So who's this guy? I mean, come on, it's Mario. I refuse to talk about his influence again. Do you see how he dresses? I think we've seen enough of Mario's rigatoni-ass feet. But him and Donkey Kong being the first two characters, besides them being the two top platforming series on the SNES, Donkey Kong and Super Mario Bros. were sort of Nintendo's first main claim to fame. Donkey Kong's arms look like drumsticks. Number three is Link. Zelda was also very synonymous with Nintendo at this point, as well as throughout all its history. And I mean, the series at this point already had an abundance of games. And uh, maybe surprising to many, the character who won a decade without a new game- Oh sorry, sorry, I didn't mean to- Oh, sorry, I, I can see myself out- At this point, Metroid had three games and was respected in its genre. But also, Link and Samus share a birth year. Actually, these three characters all share very similar DNA. And in Smash, they make up the three different archetypes. The Brawler, Sword Fighter, and Gunner. I just popped into my head, I don't know where that came from. The top row is Nintendo in the 80s, where the next row are the series from the 90s. Yoshi debuted in 1990, and he had his own games at this point. But he was mostly known for his appearances in Mario spin-offs, and come on, he's a fan favorite. Kirby debuted in 1992, and just like his games, he had an easier playstyle. Also, nepotism. Isn't that a planet? Kirby as a series is a simpler arena of platformer, but he had his home on the original Game Boy. Believing there could be games on this thing that were fun, that is always impressive to me. Have you seen Shrek Fairy Tale Freak Down? This is the worst thing I've ever perceived. Fox debuted in 1993 with Star Fox, a fan favorite series and child of Miyamoto. He was doing a lot better in the 90s. The Zonreal shooter was a remnant of those ages of, oh wowza, look at a free D. And all you got with the experience was an extra D, so. Then I think this obscure series Pokemon just came out, so they just threw it into this game. <laughs> no way that's gonna take off. And starting out, this really paints a picture of what Nintendo looked like in 1999. It's sort of cool. And not only that, but this would be a template for how they would decide future characters. But there's also the unlockables. Arguably, the first reveals for a Smash game. On the title screen, they're blacked out. You have to unlock them to discover who they are. So really, this is the first appearance for many of these. Luigi appears in the How to Play. Thanks for coming out, Luigi. Now get back in your cell. Ness from the Mother series was, even at that time, an obscure choice. Mother was by no means a big series, even in Japan, but I guess he provided a unique enough moveset due to his abilities that it would be an interesting character choice. 
The Super Nintendo was Nintendo's newest console in the 90s, and they wanted to compete with the Genesis, get a mature audience involved. So, they created a new mascot. Someone tough, strong, cool. <laughs> no, guys, that's Mario again. Yeah, they ditched that whole idea, but Captain Falcon very much represents... He's from the racing game F-Zero, the perfect letter and number to culminate how fans feel about the series. And his inclusion in Smash while he is a Nintendo character may come from the similarities he has with the prototype characters of Smash 64. I mean, come on, you know these guys. Homeowner Anthony, Bill, Mannequin Neo, Dr. Bill. And last but not least... Literally just a Kirby clone. The Pokemon Gen 1 was extremely popular, and uh... This was the joke character of this game. No way they would appear in the next one. You know, from how the first characters were chosen to the characters added due to convenience, this roster gave us an idea of what future Smash games would do for newcomers. Right down to the joke characters. It's definitely not as exciting, but this would base how we expected characters to come in future games. They'd have to be important to Nintendo's brand or popular characters from the same series. But we did get reveals for the next game in Melee. This would be where we had our first E3 reveal trailer. We basically only have footage because someone took a camera and recorded it. Otherwise, this was only for the people in the E3 conference. They got to see a young Bill Trennan and Miyamoto in a beige suit. Beige. And if you like live reactions, well, this was one of the first. Who's gonna tell them? So first we have 64 fighters and then, in order of new appearances, we have Princess Peach and Bowser. I mean, these guys go together like PB and J. And the bread. Look at those ankles. My headcanon is he actually tastes like spicy salami. These are the characters that make the Mario games Mario games. But they also established, hey, ho, oh, hey, hey. Side characters, oh yeah, they're gonna be in this game. And the second most popular franchise also got the same treatment. Next up, we'd see Zelda and Ganondorf's hand. Is your hand in melee? But we would get one of the first left field newcomers here. Yeah. Oh my god, I, it's so sweet that someone actually knew who they were. They really, really dope for that one. The Ice Climbers debuted on the Nintendo vs. Arcade Cabinet in 1984. This was before Super Mario Bros. came out. And if you actually take a close look at these games, they share some assets, but also the lead programmer, Kazuaki Morita. He worked on this game as a warm-up for Super Mario Bros. Also, Ice Climber showed that it wasn't so much the character's popularity that got them into Smash, more so it could be history, as well as unique mechanics that only they could have. So, uh, it's a simplistic game, but there's a lot under the hood. <laughs> Yeah. Back to the trailer, from here it has a beta intro not too dissimilar from the final version, and... <laughs> it's funny that officially she comes before Zelda only because of that one second gap before Zelda appears. Very big, I'm the older twin energy. Anyways, similar to Mario, but boom we have a leading lady that appeared in Ocarina of Time. This would become a trend of spoiling key plot elements within a Smash character. <laughs> Wario's a non-binary icon! And I guess you could say there were other reveals here like... Uh, Pichu? And believe it or not, that is your starting roster all accounted for. They leaned a little heavy on the Zelda and Mario for sure. The rest of the characters wouldn't be known until you unlock them. Me? Ah, the unlock screen. So blue, so ominous. Anyways, um, I mean, there's technically an order of the characters in the code as to when they were included in this game, but for most players, the order in which you unlock characters can be very different, so we're just gonna go out of order. <laughs> Dr. Mario seemed dumb, but then you realize he was on the Nintendo vs. Arcade cabinets as well, so... That's a hard pill to swallow. There's not much to say. Apparently he's a doctor, and that's not the amount of certainty I'd like to have with someone prescribing me medication. That's sort of this whole section on clones. So, for a little bit, I'm gonna go out of order just so I can explain it. Because it feels like the, the order of these characters just depends on the faces of the moon anyways. What the fuck? 
Falco was a mainstay of the Star Fox series, and even though they don't have canonical abilities, he was the next obvious choice. Young Link was also a pretty good choice, because most of Link's portrayals up until this point were when he was a child. He doesn't really offer anything different beyond that, but still, a nice choice nonetheless. Most clones are easy to understand. They look the same, and they're from the same series, so smack them together, bada boom bada bing. Same character. But what if it's a bada bop? We never trained for this! I thought this was the dude from Wave Race. Oh, how you doing, buddy? Eh, chest hurts a little. Might go pillage it off. That old Ganon, at this point, had been in most entries of the Zelda series as a villain. Ganon. Not Ganondorf. Ganondorf was only in Ocarina of Time, and time is of the essence. Why am I telling you this? Clearly, because they never even planned for him to be in this game. When Nintendo was showcasing the GameCube off at E3, there was this animation of Link fighting Ganondorf, and everyone was so impressed. And then they realized they weren't even making that into a game. But... Oh man, we, ma we spent all this time making this model. Why don't we fucking use it? I had my hopes up that Ganondorf in Ocarina of Time was actually beating the shit out of Link. Imagine how I felt when I realized his fight is just playing ping pong. And as you can see, the character choices with clones, the techniques used in Smash 64 were a hint that uh, <laughs> we'd have no shortage of them in the future. But we did have some hidden newcomers in the unlocks. Would you fault me if I thought this had to do with Inuyasha as a kid? Free. Marth is the beginning of a story that many future Smash characters would share. Fire Emblem, since its first entry on the Famicom, it was a Japan-only series. So, for the entirety of the 90s, nobody knew what Fire Emblem was. Until Fire Emblem on the Game Boy. Which really wasn't that. Or him. Oh hey, that looks like... No! It was released as an attempt to sort of get the game overseas and introduce that audience to this series. It didn't work! And the inclusion of Marth and They were a way to try and expose North America to this game. It didn't work! Someone's not a Fire Emblem fan. Anyways, Marth was the first protagonist of the Fire Emblem series, all the way in that first game. And in future games, he sort of became a legend of the series, so picking him was a great choice. Then... I actually love Gen 1 Pokemon, and I love Mewtwo. I mean, how couldn't you? But by this point, Pokemon blew the hell up. So Gen 1 and 2 were perfect to represent in Smash. It would also create a trend of movie Pokemon joining... No, no, fuck, fuck you. Get get out, you fucking werehog Sonic. And the last fighter would be one I still smile at. I remember first seeing this and thinking it was a joke. Like, actually as a kid sitting there and laughing because this character I'm fighting is flat! All of these awesome, well-animated 3D characters at a time when this was my first 3D game. And the character I unlock last is this? Even reading the unlock message, it brought a smile across my face. I didn't even know how to read. Game & Watch was really one of the first characters to prove how zany Smash could become with characters that move in a way in a different art style. And while I didn't think there was any possible way that this character had history with Nintendo as a kid, the Game & Watch line of games were really what we have to thank for many of the portable Nintendo consoles. And while Game & Watch wasn't like a main character for the Game & Watch series, he represents all of the most popular games from those line of toys. And just seeing it in Smash, you know, that is incredible that Nintendo has come so far. But yes, compared to 64, Melee definitely created the groundwork for how characters would be chosen. But reveals, well, that would all change with Brawl. With Brawl! Now, Smash has its third entry. It would cement Smash as not just this one-off series, but a trilogy. A trilogy that could sell consoles and introduce characters from different franchises into one game. Welcome to E3 2006. Grandparents tell their grandkids about walking to school uphill both ways. This is what I'm gonna tell mine. The 
orchestral arrangement, the iconic Smash logo, Smash Bros, the... It had all the makings for a hype showcase. And I think it really just needed the internet to become this sort of cultural icon. And this trailer was really the start of it. They also didn't show all the veterans immediately. They established that Mario, Pikachu, Link, and Kirby were sort of the mains. Poor f***ing Samus. But for the new characters, we'd be introduced to... The Ancestor of the Vine Sound. The splash screen with the character's name. This is the first character that had it. And I think Meta Knight was the perfect character to mark this new era. It was from a series we already knew, but didn't have a new character in it. And, I mean, look at how he moves in the trailer. He made us all so hyped for what the gameplay was gonna be like. I knew Meta Knight from a few things. In Kirby Air Ride, he was the swag pick, but also he appeared in Kirby right back at ya. Basically, Kirby kinda got ignored in Melee, so finally, he has some more characters from his series. And following up, the Ice Climber pick of this game was... Well, his name matched how I felt. Okay, so nobody knew who the hell this guy was. Even less so than Ice Climbers, it feels like. Kid Icarus was sort of a sister series to Metroid and Zelda, releasing in the same year. And it had a pretty exhaustive development period. The entire trope of spending a month sleeping in the office using cardboard boxes as blankets, just to meet a deadline. And that was only for one game. It didn't really succeed past this point. But anyways, Pit, he was a retro classic and was one of the first characters that made me realize just how deep Nintendo was as a company and how many franchises it had within it. Wait, the Metroid's a woman? It was confirmed that Samus really wears the shit out of blue. And with Metroid, it's a series with very few characters. It's the whole idea of Samus's isolation. And Zero Suit only really appeared in Metroid Zero Mission, a remake of the first game with an added section at the end where you can play as Zero Suit Samus with none of the power suit abilities, stealthing through a space pirate ship. This is all to say, it was just a really weird choice because there was definitely another character they could have picked, and choosing another version of Samus was questionable, but I'm sure the internet didn't mind. And to end it off. Mom says we have Wario at home. You ever run into your teacher at the grocery store? <laughs> what is this, Wario after hours? Wait, is it Wario on the clock? Anyways, Wario had been in so many games up until this point. Not even just the Mario spin-offs. Super Mario Land, Wario World, Wario Land, Wario Where? Where's Wario now, huh? And I guess WarioWare had a presence in the early 2000s, so that's where his design is mainly based off of. And that's it! Super Smash Bros. Brawl, the first trailer. Yep, nobody else could appear now. Showtime. A rated M character from a stealth-based story hailing on Sony consoles made his way to Smash. In a legendary turn of events, this really came down to the fact that Kojima and Sakurai, they had a good relationship, and Kojima himself asked if Snake could be in Melee, but Sakurai said no, and then ultimately, he was added in Brawl. As a kid who only played Nintendo consoles, I really had to see what other people thought, because the actual gravity of a character like this joining Smash can't be understated. I mean, he's from a rated M game, and the themes of the game are definitely not a Kirby game. One is a game about taking down huge beasts that pose a threat to the planet, and the other's Metal Gear. For Nintendo fans that didn't know him, I mean, he seemed so distant from Smash's other characters because he looks like a real man, a military soldier. And for PlayStation fans, he just seemed out of place. Me, I thought he was from Splinter Cell, Call of Duty. The closest thing I played to a shooter at this point was Yoshi's Story. So after this E3, there was a website up for promotion with a few details and screenshots. Snake even had an old render. When they're together, it looks like they're dancing. I know gamers freak out about anything in print media, but trust me, these ones are good. We have Smash Bros. Very funny fuckers. now let me in. This was the first Nintendo Power after E3 2006. This is how I got my 15 minutes of fame on the playground. I told people Samus was a woman, they didn't believe me, bam. It would be a whole year before we got more information on new characters, but it would be a steady stream. At first we only really had this retro ass dojo with Snake. Stop dancing. Then came another E3 and surprisingly, no matter which form of football you prefer, EA Sports is in the game. No, not that. If you've been following the updates, 
on the Smash Brothers Dojo website, it's a pretty good bet that you can't wait to battle with Giga Bowser. Oh yeah, I forgot when that was important. And we got a sneak peek of Deke. A leak a day early. He looks well. I can announce today that Smash Brothers Brawl will launch in the Americas on December 3rd. The dojo at this point was receiving updates every weekday, meaning every day I had something to be disappointed at. Potassium! And the dojo would be where the rest of the characters in Brawl would be revealed, sort of. But after would be the drip feed of additional veterans and the intoxicating newcomer banner. Here is where the reveals really s start. I feel like I keep saying that. So who do we get first? Oh, it's Cloud! No? Off? By how many series? Ike. Representing some of the priciest Fire Emblem games. <laughs> well, do the curtains match the drapes? Did they catch on fire? I'm blamed for real. Being one of the first 3D Fire Emblems on console, Ike really made the case for his inclusion. I mean, Marth was just a legacy pick, but Ike was actually developed with plans for a worldwide release. And this would begin a trend of new characters from a series replacing the older ones as those new games came out. More on that later. I remember everyone calling him Ash when I was a kid and hey, I know these Pokemon. Thank God. I feel like Gen 1 starters were actually one of the most perfect picks for a character and the trainer, in hindsight, was brilliant. Everyone knows them, they're popular and SOAR! Uh, Alright, yes. Another common thread with Brawl newcomers would be they'd represent new entries of a series or sidekicks from that respective series. And I mean, technically, this is three beloved Pokemon. That deserves some recognition. Next up is Diddy Kong, being the next best choice for the DK series. But for some reason, he inspires Arson. Diddy joined DK right around the time DK became DK because he wasn't that DK anymore. He was. Yeah. Diddy is like Luigi if he was a monkey and abhorrent. So he's nothing like Luigi. Lucas. Wow. Surprisingly, they decided to represent the new and Japan only Mother 3. The Japan only Mother 3. I'm kind of stumped because Mother 3 like just came out around the time of Brawl, but it wasn't like super popular or anything. And even today, it hasn't been brought overseas. So perhaps this was their attempt at pulling a fire emblem. It didn't work. And following suit with Meta Knight, <laughs> Ping, completing the trifecta of the most important Kirby characters. DDD was the Bowser of the Kirby series. And everyone was getting a villain, so why not Kirby? And last but not least... Well, you know, this is actually a very welcome surprise. Pikmin was an incredibly new IP at the time, and Olimar is an incredibly unique character. Oh, that's weird. I think dinner's gonna be late. And Olimar had a unique moveset to boot. It was garbage at times, but so was the content of his game. Yep, this set of newcomers certainly shocked us compared to Melee's. Wait, what? What do you mean there's something missing? Why does it sound like a helicopter? Sonic's the name speeds my game! Well, I shitted. Talk about stunting my maturity. <laughs> We just spent 20 minutes on characters. What do you mean, just started with reveals? The first individual specifically made character trailer would be... Snake on October 2nd, but he already had his reveals, so it doesn't really matter. No. October 10th. Every kid was lifted out of bed by the enchanting sounds of live and learn. Sonic had his reveal on the dojo through a trailer, and the internet stood still. Even news sites couldn't keep it together. I've said it before, I'll say it again, maybe even a third time, but not a fourth time. Fuck you, four. There was no character I wanted more than Sonic the goddamn Hedgehog. I'm a Sonic fan, I love the games. It explains a lot, but yes, I love the Sonic franchise. Sonic was the bar for what was impossible at this point. And I mean, the entire 90s was Nintendo and Sega pitted against one another. His existence is because of that. 
and here they really milked it. They knew how special it was, and the shot of him and Mario posing, it was so cool I could kiss you! So, as far as having dicey chances go, Sonic being placed in Smash was, at its time, the biggest franchise crossover in gaming. <sighs> so naturally, Let's put them in the f***ing Olympics, of course. Sonic pretty much marks really the beginning of the sort of crazy, wild character reveals. At least for me, this was one of the biggest ones of all time. But Sonic really proved that third-party characters were on the table, and no matter how impossible they seemed, it could be considered. But we paid the ultimate price. What did it cost? Everything. Oh, hey, Brawl's out. Oh, hey, Brawl's out. Yeah, so the rest of the characters and Subspace Emissary were sort of revealed on the website, but Japanese players sort of posted everything online first. Everything. This would be the reason future games showed the whole roster before the game came out. It made it so there was no possibility of stuff leaking and everyone could at mm -hmm. least have okay. a moment where yeah, they were sure. surprised okay. by yeah. a new character. Yeah. So, uh, thanks, Lucario. Yep, another Pokemon movie Pokemon in the movies. Actually, it replaced the cooler one. Because this happened only once, we considered this a trend. I suppose I'm kind of biased here. I was really online a lot at the time, but if you weren't, you would have experienced all these characters through Subspace Emissary. And that in its own right is pretty cool. Especially... How do we all feel that Rob is technically a Smash Bros. character? Because he is the ancient minister. But, uh, Rob follows suit as a similar choice to Game & Watch. Because in 1983 there was this teensy tiny crash of the gaming market, so Nintendo tried to sneak into the homes of parents by marketing their games as toys. They also changed his color in North America. Hey, can you recolor these Robs gray? Do it! Hello? And even more secret were the three characters you had to unlock through some special secret doors in Subspace Emissary. And that would be where the last two characters had their reveals. Toon Link. A much-loved choice replacing Young Link, but representing Wind Waker, which actually kind of spun off into its own series. And Toon Link played a lot differently from regular Link, so he was a welcome choice. But an unexpected choice was Wolf from Star Fox. Honestly, these two were some awesome last surprises that made sense as supporting cast members. And that's sort of how things went with Brawl. We had a lot of supporting characters that supported their main franchises, a focus on new series, and a few sneaky secrets. And a lot of cuts. Oh my god, we only just got through Brawl? And to think, this is before Nintendo really had an online presence. Oh no, that would begin in 2011, with the first ever Nintendo Direct. We've come very far from them holding bananas. Now Nintendo could host their game announcements all in one place, without relying on E3 once a year. And the first time we'd see them do this would be in their digital Direct in 2013. People were upset that they didn't show off games on stage! Are you sure? So it looks like the, uh, the calibration is slightly off. And, well, you know what happens next. It was an electrifying opening, so much excitement, so much beauty, and the first newcomer for Smash Bros for 3DS and Wii U would be a mouthful of a title, Jesus Christ. Villager was the first character reveal, and he showed us they had no shortage of ideas for new characters and were breaking the mold of what kind of series they would consider. Animal Crossing had been a staple of Nintendo consoles since the GameCube, just with that kind of gameplay, it was hard to imagine them fighting. I honestly forgot there was a time he wasn't in Smash because he just kind of belongs here, but we didn't have long to be excited by just him. <laughs> it 
If Sonic broke the dam of impossible characters, then Mega Man drove a pickup truck right through the rest of it. It was a hot pick everyone had on their mind. And deservedly, he got one of the most iconic newcomer trailers ever. The music, the CGI, this is what we came to know. Before this point, Mega Man seemed next up as an icon of retro gaming. But unlike Sonic, Mega Man had his home on the NES. And alongside Mario, Samus Link, he was known as a Nintendo character by proxy. So giving him his classic look, retaining what his games meant in their heyday, and including him here with characters he used to appear with. Set in stone, Mega Man truly belonged here. This also solidified that Smash 4 would be including third-party characters. We could only go up from there. Oh cool, a new Wii Fit. Yes, really. How the hell would you attack with yoga moves? It would just be like... Sakurai and Bill Trennan came on the E3 show floor and showed off live Wii Fit Trainer's reveal trailer, then went into actual gameplay of the character. Now the way it was just casually, they walked on and like, oh, we're just gonna show you something. It's the funniest, coolest, and one of the most unexpected characters, uh, ever. And honestly, this wasn't in a presentation, so those on the show floor, they were the first in the world to experience this. <laughs> And Wii Fit being a choice not only showed where they'd pull for characters, but honestly, just how creative they got. Wii Fit sold incredibly well, that's not a debate, but it represents this era of Nintendo's Blue Ocean strategy, the Wii era. I would have preferred Dr. Kawashima. And we'd have to wait a little bit before we got Kirby and Mario Kart? Better! How is that better? At least it wasn't Daisy. I do not really think anyone anticipated Rosalina. I mean, Rosalina, we had no shortage of other characters they could have picked, and people were definitely upset about that, but Gusty Garden's here. I've yet to mention it, but I mean, good time as any. Smash for Wii DS and 3U had some design documents we can look at to get a sense as to where their heads are at when designing characters. And here, it's all about the unique themes and playstyles that these newcomers can provide. Hers was being a puppet fighter utilizing her Lumas to attack from afar, as well as heralding a zero-gravity playstyle. She was also OP. Rosa, come on. You can't break a mouse in half. Oh wow, you did. Scary. You really earned your rep. was one of the characters we all really expected right around Brawl. He was an assist trophy, so we were kinda worried he'd never come, but here he is. Little Mac debuted, as you may have known, in Punch-Out, but not the NES one. There was an arcade cabinet in 1984, and it was one of the top performing arcade cabinets of that year. I think the thing holding him back for a while was the fact that he seemed basic, but funnily enough, this basic limitation became the defining factor of his playstyle. A concept that morphed into an extremely unbalanced, ground dominant, aerial buffoon that has made Little Mac a favorite of all Smash fans. Too bad he sucks. Oh, would you look at the time? It's time for the first ever Smash Direct! Are you ready to have a YouTube channel? Oh, I couldn't. That's way too cringy. Sakurai showed off many of the veterans that would appear in Super Smash Bros. for 3DS and Wii U. But wait, shouldn't there be a Pokemon no one asked for? No, no, not him. Greninja. In the development of Smash 4, Sakurai had to decide which of the Pokemon appearing in X and Y would make for the next Smash character, and he quickly decided on Greninja. But suffice to say, having none of the game to reference from, he did very well. He's got the speed, he's got the moves, and he's got the hip hop, a hippie to the hippie to the hip hop hop, but you don't stop the- STOP! But Charizard, uh, <clears throat> he kind of got rid of his trainer, Turtle, and the turd. He just said, I don't want him anymore. Holding on your own, got me ten feet off the ground. And with a very sad ending, we move on to E3 2014. Continuing the trend of colossal three character character debuts, Smash introduced Organizing Your Trash. And as far as reveals go, I mean, how many companies get their presidents to do an epic anime-inspired battle all for a character reveal? The answer is none. 
there really is not much to explain here. I mean, this was Smash finally allowing custom avatars to join the fight. You could design your own character, put yourself into the game. And Miis at this point, I mean, that's what they were since their conception. And it was just really odd that they didn't appear in Brawl, but you know, better late than never. The Miis were sort of like global warming, inevitable, but denied by men who had their own interests in mind. But we also got... Mummy! Mummy? <laughs> Oh, oh, it's a series now, cool. Paul Atena had a role in the original NES game, and especially in the 3DS one. And here it was just to represent that series more, really. Here she has many of the abilities she granted Pit from that game, with her, um, design focus being a customizable moveset. That wouldn't be obsoleted. Wait, there's someone back there! <gasps> Is it Ridley? And similar to the Wii Fit trainer, in a private presentation, another character was shown. A circle. It's Pac-Man. It's fucking Pac-Man. Guys, it's Pac-Man. <laughs> you look at retro games, you think for a sec, mm, what's a retro game? Fucking Pac-Man. He came with all of these references from his iconic game and... What? It's just a fire hydrant. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you really thought you'd get me, goddammit. If there's another derivative newcomer that starts with L-U-C, I'm going to- ah! Is that... 21E? Or... E Wait! Something's amiss! And I don't mean an unmarried woman. Time to tip the scale. Robin and Lucina make sense. Remember we were talking about Fire Emblem being only in Japan and then wazow, I came along and he's like, Don't switch on me, I got big plans. And woohoo, now Fire Emblem's a thing, except it wasn't. I wasn't doing well. We come to the 3DS and Awakening is their last chance. The climax, a do or die, going all out. It could have been the last game. And then they said, lol, just kidding. That has to be the hardest hitting just kidding I've ever felt. And revitalized this series. And the tactician Robin would make the perfect new Fire Emblem character, as that's the character players would play as in those games. And it also broke through the common misconception that all of Fire Emblem was just sword wielders. And then they added Lucina! Whee! And now here we are, the final reveal before the 3DS's game launch. I'm really feeling it! Xenoblade is the story of a game that seemed trapped forever in Japan. Being the game after the commercial failure of the Xenogear games, Nintendo didn't seem so keen on supporting it overseas. However, fans of Japan-only games started Operation Rainfall, a campaign to get localization for Xenoblade Chronicles, Pandora's Tower, and The Last Story. Nintendo even acknowledged this campaign and, in 2012, they revealed plans to bring this game over to North America. Though, they denied that this was the main reason. I only come to say this because... WHAT THE fuck IS GOING ON IN THIS SERIES?! No, 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 I don't, I don't even wanna fucking know. But honestly, good for them and the fans. This series could have been for naught, and Shulk may not have had a chance. Luckily, Xenoblade is on a much better track now. And Shulk serving as the six. See ya! What a fantastic reveal that was sorta of ruined by a teensy tiny fudge coated Photoshop little Mac leak. No way this is real, that's the costume from Brawl. <sighs> okay. E -e 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 -e. But really, he didn't even get a reveal trailer. He's the only character in this game that didn't get one. I conclude that he's actually just a costume. Hold on, can we go back to that? Can I see that five more times? <laughs> Accurate. Well, surprisingly, Bowser Jr. would make an appearance with the theme of his clown car. Oh, I thought you hated him, Alex. Oh, I hate him. After the main Mario cast, Bowser Jr. with his, um, uh, no, 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 exuberant supporters was the next logical choice in representing the Mario franchise. And well, at least it wasn't Daisy, right? But the last character would be a character that really brought Nintendo back to its roots. The tree from Kirby. 
being three characters, the duck, the dog, and the zapper, makes this the strongest canonical character according to someone I saw on Twitter. Duck Hunt has a similar legacy as Rob, but also represents Nintendo and their many peripherals over the years. For every one of those, well, you can root it back to the NES Zapper, as well as the game Sheriff, but you know, who's that guy? And there it is! Smash for Wii U and 3DS! At this point, honestly, I had expectations about this game and this was pretty much it, save for a Dark Pit and Yoga character. But fans online, they had many notions that we were still kind of holding on to, like, oh, only one Fire Emblem, only one Pokemon, if there's a third-party character, there's only going to be two of them, and cut characters, well, they're never going to return. Well, the dam was vaporized. Before, when the game was done, that was it. But now, it's a different time. The internet exists, and Nintendo is sort of learning how to use it. Meaning, DLC. The roster could be added upon, and new considerations could happen at the end of development. Meaning, characters like Mewtwo would be able to return. And Lucas. And Roy. And Re. Oh. Now this was a surprise. If it wasn't leaked. But still a surprise. The hit fighting game franchise, Street Fighter. Now, in a non-fighting game. Well, Street Fighter is the game that propelled fighting games to what they are now. Sort of all of them having this core DNA that was adopted after this game's introduction. And Ryu being here, he was an icon of this different genre of fighting. And hey, look! They listened! They added real fighting game mechanics to Smash! Do you want my face to stay like this? Is that... Is that funny? But that wasn't all because we also had the Fighters Ballot introduced. Today, we've come to know the results a little bit more specifically, but the idea was the most voted pick would be <coughs> the one that made it into the game. And this led to two of the most monumental reveals of their time. So before third parties were actually a realistic consideration, there was always a couple of characters people wanted. Sonic, Mega Man, and <laughs> Him happening at any point seemed impossible. This was only because of Square Enix. Notoriously, they are very protective of their IPs, even so far as the exclusivity of Final Fantasy and how that's represented. Final Fantasy VII is hailed as one of the best JRPGs of all time, full stop. It established so many of the tropes that you've come to know from the series and finally having Cloud here seemed like impossible picks were starting to not become impossible. Corrin. And the last character would be a surprise to everyone. The winner of the fighter ballot was Bayonetta! Or actually, she was the top choice in Europe, and the top five choice in North America. And she was also the most realizable. Also, she's the number one choice, apparently. Everyone wanted her, apparently. Bayonetta's sort of a 3D beat-em-up. And I'm not gonna lie to you and say it's one of the best performing games of all time, but it certainly has an avid fan base. Well, considering the good relationship with Sega, Bayonetta was probably a much easier character to add than any of those red tape characters, which was sort of the story for many of them. No, maybe they'd need a console that outsold any previous console before it, and maybe they just needed to have a game that wasn't on a Wii U. Things seemed so simple at the beginning. DK's arms are drumsticks. Mario's a slut. Now? <sighs> what did I just spend an hour doing? Smash for 3DS and Wii U established the new format for reveals, but by no measure were those reveals as crazy as they were about to get. There always felt like there was some asterisk to how they decided characters, that there were ideas, but they had rules for how they chose. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate First, an untitled Smash game, was teased to us in April 2018. And Splatoon in its own right, yeah, it was on the Wii U, but it was one of the first new and highly successful Smash IPs in a long time. And that only got better with Splatoon 2 on the Switch. So the Inklings snugly fit onto the game's roster like the feet on their shoes. I'm sorry. And with an upcoming Smash game, this is when everything began. The fake leaks, the chairs, the Grinch apparently. It was a wild ride, all sort of perfectly starting with the perfect psych-out. 
So we were out to the races. A new Smash game announced the same year it's coming out? Unless you're gonna tell me Minecraft's in it. We got more Smash news at E3 2018. And this Smash game was interesting because it was coming sooner than expected and they could focus exclusively on it rather than splitting it between two versions. So when Sakurai came on screen, what happened next really made time stand still. Okay, here we go! Here we go! Yo! I love it! It's fresh! Yo! He's fresh! He's got the cape and it was around his neck! Samus! She looks the same. Oh, but that, look at that! That was clean! Kirby! Ooh, cute! Bowser? Okay, so it's heavily Smash 4 ported. Yes! Baby! Yes! 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 He's looking like that! Yo! DK! They almost look clay-like, but I love it! I love it, Fox! Yup. And Falco! They got Falco! Marth, my boy! My boy, Marth! What? Oh my gosh, she's beautiful! She's beautiful! <laughs> she's beautiful! Yo, what? Guys, you gotta chill! You gotta chill! They're all here! They're all here! Sonic looks the exact goddamn same. But step- Whoa, whoa, whoa! Okay, hold on! I need to breathe! You need to give me a second here! Toad! Toad just- He just- oh. Pikachu? Wow, you're showing Pikachu now. Yes! They're back! Yes! Yes! They are back, baby! They're back! Yes! Yes! Yo, okay. Alright. You can't just show me this in- Yo, okay, do you swim through the ink? Swim through it. Swim. Falcon! ZSS, Wii Fit Trainer, they're all okay. They're all si You just- you can't just bring them back like that! You- yes, 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 yes! Yo, Ryu's back. What the fuck? Yo! Yo, he's sick! He's sick! He's sick! He's sick! He is sick! Cloud's back! Everyone's back! Oh my god, Sakurai, you madman! You absolute fiend! You fiend- Yo! Snake is- Oh my god! Guys, I called it! I was like, they're gonna just bring everyone! Pichu's back! Roy is back! Oh my god, they have everyone! <laughs> oh my god! He did exactly what I thought he was gonna do at the start! He's naming every character that's been in! Lucina! Robin! Bayo! Oh my god! Game and Watch! Oh my god, that was cool, that was cool, that was cute. Dr. Mario, Rob, Duck Hunt, Pit, Dark Shit, Palutena, oh my god, Corrin's back, everyone's back, yes, 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 they're all back, Foresight is back, did you not see Foresight there? They brought back Young, they brought back the Young Boy, Wario, oh my god, you see his face? They're all back, everybody. They're all back. Nobody got the boo. Nobody got the boo. Everyone's goddamn back. Sakurai does not f*** around. Holy shit! He's amazing! Oh my god. <laughs> Every single character in the f***. This was to me a sign of a new Smash era. The mantra of the game was, Everyone is here. The expectations and rules they used to follow are out the window. Anything goes now. Ganondorf has his sword! It was like they were doing everything that we wanted. And the success of the Switch, I think this allowed the stars to align. Because now, Nintendo held a few more chips to negotiate third-party characters. And I love chips, Dill Pickle especially. Everyone made an appearance in this video. Inkling, the updated veterans, it was unlike any prior reveal, because so much was shown all at once. It was colossal, but not more colossal than... A storyline throughout the history of Smash is the Metroid villain Ridley, and how his size prevented him from joining the fight. But he always did get close, so that's always worth recognition. Ridley's first Smash debut was in 64. You see him back there? Me neither. He was in Melee's intro, he was a boss in Brawl, twice, and he was a stage hazard on a god-awful stage with a god-awful model. 
So for many fans, this was the nail in the coffin. We really were hoping for him, and it just seemed like they were not going to do it. His inclusion had been sought after for as long as the character of Ridley had been seeking Metroids. He's on Super Metroid's cover for Pete Sake! But the one prevailing reason every time for him not to be included was his size. Luckily, they realized, oh, oh wait, nobody f***ing cares. But more seriously, it was a statement to me. They're going above and beyond, against their previous choices, breaking the boundaries of what's possible, all to make fans happy. <sighs> Welcome to Echo Fighters! It's funny how a little label makes something seem more special than it is. Like Starbucks drink sizes. With this new label, characters once considered too unimportant for a main slot were considered as Echo Fighters. They were next to their main counterpart on the roster and weren't considered a new character. But still, it made a lot of people happy. For Daisy, uh, um, her cult. Anywho, we move to August, the pettiest of months. We're back with more character reveals in a Nintendo Direct, beginning with... <laughs> Kicking off the 8-8 Direct, Luigi's dead! Yes! But Simon Belmont, he was a classic NES character. Remember, like, way back at the start of all of this, when I mentioned those iconic 80s Nintendo characters? Well, if in 64 they would have added other company characters, you can bet Simon and Mega Man would be in Smash 64. He had been requested for a long time, and I suppose now he was the front-running retro icon. And his representation is wonderful. And... Richter. Um, he's an Echo Fighter. From... How expensive?! and he offered more representation to later entries of the Castlevania series. And while there, yeah, are more popular characters, he worked as an Echo Fighter and allowed for a true celebration of Castlevania. But today, there was a little more. Dark Samus. Again, offering more representation to a series that seriously needed it. And, uh... Krom. He was sort of a mix-and-match savings deal. It's like a variety pack, and I guess some of this stuff is good. Anywho... Wow. This character held a very similar spot to Ridley. He was heavily requested as a villain, but seemed not possible potentially for other reasons. Ah, it's a tale as old as time. Microsoft bought Rare in 2002 and took with it a lot of the personality. Donkey Kong still had games with K. Rule in it, but he only really appeared in spin-offs. And then he sort of stopped appearing altogether. Even when Donkey Kong did return, he was nowhere to be found. So, he did have a chance, but... Nintendo didn't really seem like they wanted to do anything with him. And a lot of those old era Donkey Kong characters were gone with Rare. Plus, he'd only really have been picked for a small audience, but nevertheless, his inclusion, his music? <laughs> now that he's here, I can't picture the game without him. He's right at home. Oh, and now we're uh, winding down with a few simpler, more expected fighters. Isabel from Animal Crossing. She sort of represents a new face to the series. For my generation, we only really had Tom Nook the villager, but in New Leaf, Isabel sort of became a fan favorite and the new face of the series. So her as an Echo Fight, oh, 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 she's, she's original. Uh, uh, all right. Well, she rounds up the Animal Crossing characters and overall represents the series better. And then the final Nintendo Direct. There were boxes, there were Grinches, and I just wanted it all to be over. Never mind. Bring it on! Ah, Ken. With Ryu being on the roster, adding Ken as an Echo Fighter, it was a no-brainer. And you could make a case for him being just as popular as Ryu too. But it was a red herring. The real last character to cap off Smash Ultimate was... Nice. Well? At least he has a macaroni and cheese skin. Ah, the contractually obligated Pokemon. I think he made people contract something. 
Truth be told though, I was already at the point of accepting all of the new fighters. We had so many characters we had wanted over the years that, sure, add a new Pokemon, who cares? At the very least, he had a cool and interesting new design playing off of wrestling, and that made him come alive. But we all knew that wasn't going to be it, as there was the potential of DLC. Infinite new possibilities that would be re- Okay, honestly, this is one of the funniest additions ever. It's not random because it's obscure, but it's random because it's literally a f***ing common enemy from the Mario series. But everybody knows it. So, actually, it's probably a great addition. God damn it. I Jesus. Even still, I love that he's here. It's so dumb, but so good. It's time for the moment you've been waiting for. Sans from Undertale. I gotta learn to shut the f up, don't I? I was a little excited. Persona 5 is a JRPG that permeated the North America gaming subconscious like never before. Now, the previous two entries put the game on the map, but by and large, it was still very niche. With Persona 5, however, it became iconic, symbolic, and was nominated for a Game of the Year, an honor many games like this don't get. And maybe if it wasn't going against some of the best games we've had in recent years, it would have had a chance. Besides this, Atlas didn't really have a representative in Smash. We all kind of thought Shin Megami, the mainline series, was going to get a representative before Persona. Because Atlas has a pretty long history with Nintendo. But coming full circle, Joker is by and large a recent representative that represents an extremely popular game. And this is just my opinion, but I don't suspect that Persona 5 will fade into obscurity. I really think it's going to remain in history as one of the most potent and revolutionary JRPGs of this decade. Genuinely, this was the character for me. This was the one that got me out of my seat screaming because I was so happy. Because I didn't think it could happen. And, well, it did. To me, now, it seemed that anything could happen. Once again, talking about the NES, there were a few series that had their beginnings there. Mario, Zelda, Metroid, Mega Man, Castlevania, Metal Gear, and Dragon Quest. It was the grandfather of every stinking JRPG you know. You see, an RPG, its design has a lot to thank from this series. And many expected at least one of the characters from Dragon Quest to appear. How about all of them? Yeah, they decided to bring in the new, the old, and some of the most iconic Dragon Quest. Wait, what's in his pocket? RAZ! With their spell select menu in mana, they bring us one of the most interesting characters in the series that represent the history of RPGs. And I think at this point, we are finally realizing that all of the characters were more or less going to be third party. We just didn't know the lengths they were gonna go. <laughs> oh my god, I love them. I can't believe they're here. They're so perfect. Banjo-Kazooie, by and large, is a remnant of an extinct age of gaming. I personally love the games, but I understand they're not exactly as influential as some of these other fighters. They're largely a pick for a select group of fans, but that showed us the direction the fighters pass would go. And actually, Sakurai's last Famitsu column details that Banjo was actually the second overall pick of that fighter's ballot. So it was clear they had to make him possible whenever. So for them, I guess, he was probably in line to be chosen as DLC. To me, it's honestly like they are Nintendo characters, just they aren't. And in my opinion, if any character represents the N64, it's them. Hell, they play like a Smash 64 character, and I'm glad that one of my favorite characters that I wanted is here. How did I get so lucky? Hey, come on! No, I'm good. I, I'm good right here. I'm, hey, I'm fine. No, no, don't worry. I'm cool. Hey, come on. It's cool. Hey, come no, on. no, I'm no. Um, well, I'm gonna have to be honest with you. Uh, nobody knew who this was. Everyone was sort of like, 
explaining to you, like, you should know who Jerry Gogurt is, and I'm like, why would I? Terry is from a series called King of Fighters, and for being the King of Fighters, you think it's odd that nobody's heard of him. The game was actually extremely popular in South America. This is where the Neo Geo, the console it was mainly on, had a presence, and because of the cost of consoles, arcades were extremely popular. So King of Fighters was heavily played there. All the same, he's a popular character for a specific group of fans, and that's what Terry and Banjo were sort of showing us. And I think this is sort of the point where things got a little staler. We were having such a grab of different genres of games, and if you didn't know all of them, at least you'd appreciate- Lila. It's like coleslaw, you know, you didn't ask for it, but you could take it or leave it, but you certainly know you wouldn't survive off it. Can I get fries? Lilith was, uh, let down for many fans. But I think it's because many of us thought this was the last character. <laughs> Luckily for us. <laughs> and by this point, Byleth is basically the hump day of characters. Rather, the hump character. Uh, shut up. Honestly, I really enjoy Byleth's inclusion. Three Houses was an awesome game, and I think it pushed Fire Emblem into the gaming space even more so than before. Although I did prefer the plant. Um, I mean, I guess. People are up in arms about arms until they weren't. Where's the one to switch rep? I'm gonna be honest, this one game from the Switch's launch still did better than Star Fox Zero. And while it was like sort of a flop, I guess it represents the Switch's unique play style with Joy-Cons. It was a fun game, it just didn't have the impact maybe they were hoping. And I know I thought that an arms rep was gonna be one of the first characters revealed. Not a DLC. Maybe Min Min can become the next honorary my series is dead but I'm great in Smash type character. Well, it was a rocky start because at this point we were worried that the rest of the characters would just be first party. I would like to make an announcement and say I was right. And I'm annoying. Personally, I never thought that Steve would be crazy to appear in Smash. If anything, I thought he'd be the perfect character to wrap up this game's roster. Like, whether you like it or not, Minecraft is a growing game and one of the biggest games, uh, ever. Yeah. It is not bound by a certain console and even by a company. I mean, yeah, it's Microsoft owned, but Minecraft appears everywhere and is played by everyone. People probably know Minecraft more than any other character on this damn roster. So him next to Mario, I love it. I love it so much. And the way they implemented the gameplay of Minecraft into a fighting game character is just so damn cool. Well, I hope you don't like these characters or anything because now they're gonna die. Remember in Smash for PU, this series had only two songs? I guess with the success of the Switch and Fighters Pass 1, Squeenix stopped squeeing about the characters and just said, You dumb idiot babies wanna go play in Sephora? Uh, I think I'm mistranslating. Sephiroth is the reason I need to remake this goddamn video. But uh, I'm just impressed how spanning Final Fantasy VII is as a series. And how it's come to finally have its day in Smash. Notoriously, they were not letting up the reins with what Smash could do with this property, so now... It's just a nice payoff to finally see both Cloud and Sephiroth here. My only exposure to him was... <laughs> First Mario wears sleeves, then this. Okay, one day I will try this game again because I've heard the tutorials are kind of, um, not good. But my brain's basically the rock they removed from Charizard's moveset, so I don't know. Oh, this is off to a horrible start. Well, where was I? We already described Xenoblade and how it's actually having a bit more prominence here with Xenoblade 2, so it was only natural that a Xenoblade 2 rep was going to happen, I just didn't think it happened so late. Even fans of this series are glad it wasn't Rex. And truthfully, Pyra and Mithra are the ones that sort of make the game. Even how they're utilized is similar, and sort of a spoiler, but who am I to say what? <laughs> I, don't, I, don't know what I don't even know what this game's about, what? Tekken was a series many eagle-eyed fans wondered about joining Smash, especially with their tie-ins on the Wii U, but also with just how chummy Bamco is with Nintendo. Besides there now being four different fighting games in Smash, Tekken was heavily expected and you know what? Kazuya fits. 
I, I didn't really want this old fart. But wow, uh, here we are. The end of Smash Bros. At this point, we knew they had to let out with a bang, but my heart told me they didn't care. How many times before this? I mean, we just saw the honorary last character slot. Is it gonna be a Byleth or a Corrin? No, 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 worse. It's gonna be some Cinderace. Oh God, not real boom. Okay, who is it? Oh my God. Oh my God. If this is Kingdom Hearts, I'm gonna like shit my pants and then also cry. What? Huh? Oh my god. What is this? Alright folks, it's been fun. I'm gonna go. Let's go! I cannot deny this character had one of the most astronomically high requests. Who won the fighter ballot? It was f***ing Sora. Kingdom Hearts has its issues, of course, but nonetheless, it's a series that does what no other can. It can be charming, absolutely ridiculous, and nonsensical, but clearly, it's something that has bridged kids to be introduced to JRPGs. It's close in the hearts of many people who've played it. I have never played it, but I do like to watch Goofy die. Its story, the release of the games, everything about this series is mystifying and confusing, but all the same, it is one of the most impactful Smash appearances. It, look at the bottom of the screen, it says Disney! So what do you think, buddy? How were the character reveals? Were they up to snuff? <laughs> Wow. Starting this, I kind of wanted to just take a look at the Smash series as a whole, all the way back from 64, and looking through the whole thing now that I have this finished and just being able to watch it, rewatch it over, damn, this, this series is actually f***ing incredible. Like, it's kind of weird that it even exists, and I only believe that it's going to age better, because even Sakura has remarked, what are we going to do after this? Because, like, he, he doesn't know what he could add to the series. This one was where everyone comes back. They add everything to the current formula possible to make it a fun and fulfilling experience. And it is. Like, maybe it's not competitive for everyone, but it's still a competitive game. It's got every character you could want. Every possible stage. Customization to those stages. Stage customization. A story mode with all the characters in it. It's incredible. It even exists, and the lengths they've went to represent all of the characters, I looked at 40 characters around this point, looking at their history, their movesets, and their design, and it's just always so incredible the care put into this game. And more personally, Super Smash Bros. for Wii U is where I started this channel, it's where I started talking to you about games, and kind of revisiting everything, looking at it all again, it really is humbling. It's making me very thankful to have been able to do this, to be on this journey, and to share it with all of you. Um, so thank you. That's it. I'll see you on the flip side.